meeting of the Ledger Town Council to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Here. Are there any resident and property owners that would like to speak before the council? Yes. Mr. Gardner. Evening. Peter Gardner. Um, citizen, real estate developer, long business owner. Uh, I'm also a member of Green Falls Associates LLC, which has done a number of subdivisions in town, built a number of roads. And I want to talk about what Green Falls is and the process that goes into subdividing property. You don't just put your plan in and give it to Charlie Carno. He's blessed it and you record it. You submit an application only after doing a preliminary review with town staff, preliminary review with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Then you meet a prepare a subdivision plan, which are quite involved. I have a set with me if anybody would like to see it, that meets Subdivision regulations, zoning regulations, and all the other rules and regulations, including the state health code. In this case, we then did a public hearing that's advertised in the London Day twice. Everybody had opportunities to make comment on the subdivision and say anything they wanted. Since day one, the road we have involved in that subdivision is called Starter's View. Starter's View has been used in writing legal descriptions for a number of different properties. Uh, including a deed to the town that the town has. Starter's View was used in preparing a marketing plan and preparing a website that the real estate agents have done, spending many thousands of dollars. In fact, the sign is up that says Starter's View. And the town does that, and we've already paid the town for the sign that says Starter's View. During the construction of Starter's View, we had a small area of the road that settled, and we noted that in a letter to the Planning and Zoning Commission. After doing some testing, we discovered that uh, the paver was shy in a few places with the depths. That's all been brought out to light. We worked with town uh, engineer, and he and the uh, engineer that did the original design, both professional engineers, have signed off saying it beats the road ordinance based on bonding being put in place. The town engineer came, to, came up with a bond estimate of $40,000. The bond has been posted, cash bond, in a passbook that we've signed to withdraw stuff give to the town uh, treasurer. We dotted all the I's, dashed all the T's. Like I said, done a number of different roads in town. We've always been well above board. In fact, there's three roads we've done in town where we went above and beyond what the requirements of the subdivision regulations were. In fact, a year after the road was accepted by the town, we did thousands of dollars worth of work on three different roads because we were asked to, because we're good citizens. Some of the comments that have been made over the last several months have really bothered me. I've held back. You, you, you all need to know the facts and how this is all done. I've given a quick outline. I understand I only have three minutes, but I can go as long as you want me to. As long as it's not over three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, we had a public hearing with the Planning and Zoning Commission after a thorough review of, of the plans and, and, and the road name. We built the road. We had the problems that have been noted. We'll certainly clean them up. We had a smaller area that's been depressed. The snow has made it real difficult to deal with it. My brother and I filled it in with uh, the same mix the town uses to fill in potholes. When the uh, plants open up, paving plants, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to cut it out, recompact it, and pave it to the same level as the rest of the road will have to be. And that includes a one-inch overlay to meet the road thickness requirements. I'm bringing all this up so council members will understand what's involved in the whole process. As I said, we've done this a number of times in a number of different towns. Posting a bond is common practice. Posting a bond is all by statute. It's in place, and this is about the only town I know that requires a cash bond. 
Most times a letter of credit, insurance certificate, or something from the bank. We put our money where our mouth is. There's $40,000 in cash sitting there to cover what the town engineer has said plus interest if, if it gets more expensive. So I've got a lot of information here, including letters from engineers that say it meets all the regs. But the thing, thing you need to understand is this didn't just crop up here. It went again through the same process, similar process to the approval, reviewed by the town engineer who wrote a letter, reviewed by the design engineer who's written a letter about the road, reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission, which unanimously agreed to passing this law into acceptance, reviewed by your land use subcommittee, which again unanimously said accept the road. And I hope that this commission, this council, will do the same. We've met all the obligations we have, and I hope you can unanimously accept the road as built with the exception of the improvements we have to make, and as named. And I'll answer any questions anyone anyway may have. Thank you. Thanks. Any other residents, property owners, like to speak before the council? Mr. Lamb. I like what Mr. Gardner said. Puts his money where his mouth is. He's going to complete the project. I have one question. Should be a completion date on it. Plants, according to American Industries and Tilcon, they're opening around the 14th of April, weather permitting. So if I would hope that a 60-day period would be sufficient to complete the road 100% according to Ordinance 45. Hopefully you'll take that into consideration. The other question, I guess, is for the mayor, has the water leak been found? If you'd answer that later. And where was it? How was it repaired? By whom? And like to find out when the town does accept it, it'll be open to the public so that we can also watch what's being done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other um, residents or property owners like to speak before the council? Yes. <coughs> Again, with the uh, three-minute interval, I'm going to read my remarks so that I finish in a timely fashion. Good evening. I'm Ed Monaghan, 49 Homestead, and I serve as the chairman of the Southeastern Connecticut Water Authority, <coughs> the lead-based utility that provides potable water to, among other customers, roughly half of the ledger residents who receive utility water. A week ago, 5th of March, an invitation to bid on the Ledyard WPCA, I'm sorry, a Ledyard Public Works uh, project appeared in the classified section of the day. And I want to <coughs> take this opportunity to commend the town of Ledyard for including in this notice, just above the signature of our finance director, Marsha Hancock, the following sentence. The contract will be awarded to the lowest responsible and qualified bidder whose bid is the lowest of those bidders possessing the skill, ability, and integrity necessary to perform the work in good faith. I may have missed such a statement in previous Ledyard requests for bids, uh, <clears throat> but certainly I hope such words appear in all future such announcements. At this time, when our town is faced with apparently unavoidable increases in both its Board of Education and general budgets, and a concomitant rise in our mill rate, or increase in our mill rate, we can hope that such business-like clarity in the town's approach to contracting will serve to set to rest the concerns caused by the contention voiced repeatedly in this chamber that, quote, we don't have to go with the lowest bidder, even if they are deemed qualified. Again, I applaud the town's commitment to the policy of retaining the services of the fully qualified bidder who has tendered the lowest bid in response to a formal request for bids in every instance where contracts are let. In closing, I would be remiss if I did not remind you that if such a policy had been in effect four years ago when the operation of Ledyard's WPCA water system was put out to bid, this town would have reaped a savings of several hundred thousand dollars in the intervening years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any other resident and property owners wish to speak before the council? Uh, committee, Commission, and Boards reports. 
comments of town councilors. Mr. Eichelberg. I have two comments that I've been asked to pass along. <clears throat> the first was, good job on the roads in the snow. The second was, regarding the budget, you guys have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Eichelberg. Uh, Mr. Psalms. Uh, I would just like to uh, comment on what the RFP actually said uh, for the water contract when it was awarded. Um, it says, it said, the ledger WPCA will award a contract resulting from the RFP to the responsible offerer whose offer is determined to be the best value to the town of Ledger, technical price and other factors considered. The following factors will be considered in determining best value. I won't read all the details, but the factors were technical approach and understanding, management, cost, fit, and personnel. And with regard to personnel, it was licensing and experience, and we provided more details at the time. Thank you. Any other counselors have comments? <coughs> Mr. France. Three, post up the three minutes. <coughs> bring up the presence, uh, Roxanne's bringing up the presentation. Um, the town council received uh, several letters from residents uh, concerning the budget, uh, primarily in uh, support of the uh, Board of Ed side of the budget. Uh, during the public hearing and the uh, town meeting, I presented a presentation. What I have here is a portion of that that accounts for and makes people aware of the Board of Ed costs that are on the general government side of the budget. The background. Um, State the Board of Ed budget uh, does not include the total cost of education and ledger. Some of those costs are on the general government side of the ledger. But the most significant of that is the health insurance costs. Um, in the background, that is following several years of underfunding and poor financial oversight by the Board of Ed of the health insurance line item. The Town Council in 2002 took the budget control authority away from the Board of Ed for that line item. So since the 2002 2003 fiscal year, the responsibility for funding that line on making sure it was fully funded has resided on the town council. In addition, there are uh, significant personnel related costs on the general government side that include the workman's comp, uh, non teacher retirement, and school nursing. And there are other additional in kind services uh, that are, uh, and other than the debt service of school projects, it's uh, relatively small. <coughs> Next slide, please. This uh, table summarizes the major. Uh, costs. And you'll note that the increase in health care coverage uh, a lot of the Board of Ed is over a million and a half dollars. Um, total of these major expenses is just about the same, uh, which amounts to a 47% increase in the cost. Next slide, please. The top table on this slide uh, shows as submitted. So you'll see the three about 3.5% three increase that the Board of Ed has advertised in their uh, budget. But the real number that their, their budget increased if they included the costs related to personnel, primarily to health care, is over 7.5% or almost $2.6 million. So I know that the, it's read in the paper that, uh, of course, the budget is submitted to, by the mayor to the town council by uh, charter. But that, that includes the budget that was submitted by the Board of Ed. And I want to make sure that people are aware of the total cost of the Board of Ed. And if you're looking at places to trim, you, you know where you are looking at uh, the most significant part, you go talk to the Board of Ed, the parts that are related to the town side other than the health care coverage increase, only about to a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, and to give you some background on health care, we have seen in this year an inordinate amount of claims uh, over and above what we anticipated uh, in the budget. Uh, and so based on that, we have about a 13% increase in the health care costs for the coming recommended by our insurance advisor for the coming year. And that amounts to almost $2 million of increase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Any other comments? I just want to note quickly that the media portal does not seem to be working. The, the camera. Okay. Any other comments? Um, it was just passed along to me. Um, and thank you that our filming of the meetings. In the past, it was very difficult to hear. And we did read, uh, re reach, read, we did receive a comment that um, 
it's nice to listen to now. Everybody can be heard. And of course, that's based on the new equipment. And uh, so we're certainly uh, happy for that and encourage anybody that hasn't been watching because of their past experience that they should listen again for sure. So. Our okay. vast audience. Our vast audience. Well, you know, I'm always surprised at how many people watch. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, minute approval. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. McGordy? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Ratton? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Eichler? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Frantz? Yes. Am I in favor? Is there a post? Motion carries. Uh, communications. <coughs> I would just like to mention that there is a Freedom of Information Commission Conference. It's going to be held on Friday, April 4th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, I'm actually fascinated by it, certainly considering going. Roxanne is going, so that's a very good thing. But if anybody is interested in going, they need to let Roxanne know. We, we did receive an email with all of this. Um, it's, 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 I thought it was a full day, but it's 8 to 2, so... Um, I think it will be very interesting. I, I've always found the whole subject of freedom of information quite interesting. And um, we'll, we'll get the word out and hope that we get some participation from other commissions and boards in, in, in the town. You have the communication list. You also have the referral list. And a new item on that, um, I did meet with um, the Mayor's assistant, Mark, and we have a solution for the liability insurance issue we were having difficulties with as far as nonprofits and quasi-government agencies like RTCs and DTCs holding me meetings at on town property or holding fundraising events on town property, and we think we have a workaround for that, and so we are. I'm going to refer. Um, an email from him to the admin committee uh, to consider um, a resolution to uh, deal with that. Okay, subcommittee liaison reports. Admin, Mr. Eichelberg. The administration committee met earlier tonight. We moved forward several new appointments. Um, we also moved forward in, uh, the, uh, the authorization for the mayor to sign a grant application money for um, health and human services, substance abuse, and mental health services. Uh, we'll talk about that some more when we get to it in, in the agenda, um, and that's it. Any questions for admin? Finance, Mr. France. In addition to the one item that is on the agenda tonight, the Finance Committee had uh, the, our insurance advisor come brief us on the coming year and the prognosis, and also look at uh, the history of being self-insured versus having full insurance, so having uh, buying insurance through an Anthem Blue Cross or equivalent insurance company and looking at uh, whether it was, which one option was better than the other. Uh, so they looked at the claim history over the last several years uh, and, uh, and also discussed some of the Affordable Care Act costs uh, that affect the town. Uh, one of the things that uh, was, was good to note that over the last three years, while the average typically has been an 8 to 10 percent increase. Uh, we've had below, much below that. In fact, three years ago was a negative a decline in costs. The last two years have been between 4 and 5 percent. Uh, as as all, with all things, uh, things even out, we do end up, as I said, stated earlier, about a 13 percent increase this year. But looking at the costs, uh, our insurance provider looked at, we asked the question concerning uh, being fully insured through a company, and he, he estimated the cost to be an additional 8 percent on top of what we had currently. So uh, the Finance Committee saw no reason to change anything at this point, but that was uh, the gist of the uh, information we received. Any questions for finance? Okay, moving on, information technology, Mr. Dombrowski. Information technology met on March 4th. Uh, most of the bulk of it was based on the MIS director's report. The MIS director is updating various uh, online applications, getting land use permits online, getting ledge light to work, working with the mayor to get ledge light to use the people forms tracking. Um, 
still working with Webster Bank and People GIS to get online billing. Um, we're replacing some of the other applications so that we can continue to uh, upgrade and get people online and not have to and stuff like that. And there's various other things that I point to that other uh, agents, departments are looking at adding into for like parts of the recs for participation, a few other things like that that they're looking to into adding into the functionality. That's my report. Any questions for <coughs> IT? I'd just like to add that um, I always like to remind the counselors occasionally to go in to the website and just sort of beta test it and see if you notice anything. Because every once in a while I go in and I'll find something that's, you know, the person is no longer in that position, something has changed. And Regina's very quick to update it, but we need to let her know because she doesn't necessarily have that information. So please take some time occasionally, maybe once a quarter, to just go in there and poke around and see if you find anything that is amiss. Land use planning, public works. Mr. Dombrowski again. Land use also met last week. Um, we noted that the Town Center Committee had met on uh, this past month, uh, previous Monday, um, and with great regret noted we had uh, resignations from Ms. Bill LaRue, who was a longtime resident of Ledger. Um, he's also with only member of the Legend Town Center Committee who actually lived in Legend Center. Uh, but due to, I guess, health concerns, uh, he, he had to resign from the committee uh, with much regret. He brought a lot forward for that committee. Um, it's, they continued to discuss things going on with like the police facility and the future plans for Legend Center School. Um, the committee also reviewed roads such as Sandy Hall, Long Cove, Shoeville, Pumpkin Hill, and Vinegar Hill that are used by bicyclists. Uh, Council Sounds has been working to, to push to have signs uh, posted in various locations around town to notify the requirement for motorists to three, to, that bicyclists have a three foot right away. Um, so we've moved forward. We've agreed on several locations that I've identified in my report. Um, the the uh, public works director says that he has the funds in his signed budget acquisition and installation of those signs. So at some point in the future, this is going to come to a full, uh, to the full council for approval. Um, we also reviewed a proposed resolution to address the permanent closure of Lambtown Road extension. Um, then that got approved and, and moved to the council as well for a future agenda. Um, it also um, was on the agenda tonight as far as accepting Just wanted to add a clarification. Um, the bicycle uh, law was actually brought to the council um, by a resident who was a cyclist, and there was a long conversation on the, the Ledger Community Gales, Ledger Gales Ferry Community Forum um, about the cycling laws. It was, it was amazing to me how much confusion there is about um, who has the right of way, um, what to do when you see a cyclist car oncoming and you want to pass the cyclist, again, who's got the right of way. Uh, and the law is that you have to give the cyclist three feet of, of passing room. You can't, you can't just make it by. Uh, you got you got to pass them with three feet of safe clearance by state law. That's the reason for these signs. So I, I thought it was a great contribution by the residents. So. Any other questions for Lee Andrews? We have some reports. Mr. Gabordi, Board yeah. of Education. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the board started by congratulating the middle high school, middle and high school on their combined band concert. And I saw the counselor, Alan, beat me to the congratulations to the wrestling team, so I'll leave that alone. Uh, Mr. Strickland uh, indicated that during the joint finance committee meeting, he found the council members' questions uh, to be very much appreciated and very good questions, and he also appreciated the general tone. Uh, Superintendent Patterson was... Uh, it was suggested to uh, Mrs. Patterson during our meeting that she again reach out to uh, uh, North Stonington in the hopes that uh, Wheeler High School may see fit to consider regionalizing with us. Uh, this is an offer that's been presented before, and again, it was politely declined. Uh, the board wants you to know a new policy is coming soon on the management of the central activity funds. Uh, some of you may have heard of this called the CAF account. Uh, the recent PMBC meeting with the architect discussed a variety of issues of importance in any school construction, 
including the possibility of increased special education numbers and the ability to reduce outplacement, which would save an awful lot of money, as well as potential requirements, perhaps coming down the pike, for universal preschool. Ms. Beck-Llewellyn recommends a joint meeting of the PBMC, the Board of Ed, and the Town Council. The weight of the snow on the Ledger Middle School roof, which was a cause of concern to some citizens, has been checked and determined to be well within the safety parameters. And the maintenance director is preparing for submission to the Board an analysis of the significant infrastructure needs in several schools. In the business manager's report, it was stated that in April, the state will monitor the school lunch program at two schools, and these programs must be shown to meet national requirements. The Board is receiving proposals for energy improvements in hopes of reducing costs, and grants from the state provide incentives for this. They indicated that electrical outlets are too few in most schools, with many classrooms having only one. Oh, excuse me, only two. Under information items, there were presentations, and I emphasize that the presentations were extensive, and to really get what was going on there, you'll need to look at them. There were PowerPoints presented by principals of both the Ledger Middle School and Ledger High School having to do with the upcoming budgets, and Mr. Keith, the middle school principal, discussed specific increases in each subject and activity area. The bottom line for the middle school was an increase of approximately $121,000 to approximately $124,000, $121,400 to $123,800. The high school principal, Mrs. Amanda Fagan, broke the high school spending into five major categories. She also broke out a lot of individual line items, and the bottom line for the high school is approximately $403,000 for next year. There was extensive discussion on several items related to next year's school calendar, such as Veterans Day and the 2015 graduation date. The board has indicated that before finalizing the calendar, they will seek parent input on these and any other issues. And finally, policies on charging school meals and on alcohol, drugs, and tobacco usage were passed unanimously. Any questions for Mr. Gordy? Thank you. WPCA? WPCA has not met, but I did attend the Permanent Municipal Building Committee meeting with Councilor Krantz, and there was an update on the pump station on Avery Hill Road, and we also received an update from the mayor today about that. The contractor actually started today on site. The pump station is being built, should be built within the next month or so, and could be operational by the end of May. And again, this is all pending weather, but they are moving forward finally. Weather has been the primary holdup. And it was also mentioned in questioning about the project management and the Groton Utilities is the project manager for this project, and they are well under budget in their costs for doing so. That's my report. Any questions? Permanent Building Committee? In addition to the water project that Councilor Sall just addressed, they walked through the police facility and the middle school project, or school projects. On the police facility, Brian Humes of Jacuzzi Humes brought a schedule of events forward to still be in the goal. It was tasked to the Building Committee of making a May RFP for going out for construction bid. They planned several meetings in March to discuss various details of the construction process. There's a fourth one to be with town officials that's still to be scheduled. They've targeted particular means of planning and zoning and other town commissions that are required to get through the process. One of the subjects that came up was fire suppression. Working with the fire marshal, they're still working through that process. That's not something that was in the original bid, so it's something that if we choose to add to it, it will be an additional cost where we have to be trade space off or something else. They did discuss also the potential of the land swap or the additional small sliver of land related to the drainage. Also, we're still in discussion of additional portion of land that would impact the parking situation. The Board of Education Facilities Project, 
They had a discussion of the demographic study that was recently completed and how that would impact the project. He, Representative Mr. Ireland from Silver Petrocelli, says he's resolved all the questions that he has to proceed forward with the project from both the building committee and the court bed. All the outstanding issues for preliminary design, from his perspective, have been resolved. He did present a draft of that to the building committee, which they are reviewing. I had to leave at that point, but other means, that's what I have. Yeah, I just wanted to add some comments about this particular committee. I've attended a few meetings now, and the Permanent Municipal Building Committee has three major projects going on right now. They're finishing up Avery Hill with a pump station just reported. They're working on the police station, and they're working on the school project. And they are very well-run meetings. There's a lot of expertise. People don't always agree, but there's always understanding between both sides. It's a very interesting meeting to watch. It's a lot of work, and it's done on time, and they move along very well. Very impressed. Great. Any questions? Yes. How soon after the new pump station is built are they going to take care of the old pump station? Are they going to roll right into it? You're talking about the old pump station over here on Gallagher Road? Avery Hill. Oh, the Avery Hill, the well itself. Yeah, the well. The well and the pump station. That's being handled by the WPCA. That well has to be abandoned and filled, and there is a long list of inventory of wells and pump station equipment and other supplies, literally buildings that have to be demolished and removed, and that's just one of them. So the WPCA is currently working on a list of those. They're prioritizing them, and they're going to be coming back to the town with a list. Okay, so at some point. At some point. Short answer? Yeah. Soon. At some point. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor Rodlica? A meeting was held in my office on March 5th. A meeting was held in my office on March 5th between myself, the mayor of Groton City, and the director and staff of Groton Utilities. The purpose of this meeting was to discuss a proposal to contract WPCA billing services to Groton Utilities. This is an issue which has been in discussion for almost four years. Water operations are already being conducted by and very successfully by Groton Utilities, and we're working with the WPCA to determine the best way to provide the service that benefits the WPCA rate payers and the town. The police building, as Councilor France indicated, is progressing. Tomorrow is a pre-bid meeting on the demolition here on the site with bid openings on the 20th of March and potentially an early April actual demolition process to begin. We're really scurrying to get those buildings emptied because there's just a tremendous amount of stuff. If any of you have moved recently or you know what it's like to move, you think everything's emptied, so you have to go in and get those last few things out. And so we're really scurrying to get the buildings empty and to identify tomorrow anything that's going to remain or be in there when the buildings are demolished. The architect gave a schedule, a preliminary schedule of construction, again looking at a start by construction support by commencement by July and potential completion. I forget the date that he used, but I'm hoping sometime in late spring, I'm sorry, late summer of 2015. As part of the design process, the town has been metering the water use, the reason being we have to design the septic system for the actual use that's metered. That is what Ledge Light would demand. For a new building, it's strange, you can use the estimated based on the building size, but for an existing building, if you have a meter that says you're using a certain amount, that's what you have to use. So we've done more precise metering. We brought the use down from 40,000 gallons a month down to under 10,000 gallons a month. There's no indication of where this loss is occurring, and perhaps the actual start of construction will solve this mystery. If not, re-piping the water to the police station and to the town hall directly from the main on Colonel Ledger Highway will obviously give us the direct source of the water, and we'll have to replace the septic system. Thank you. Thank you.
once we do that, we can shut the water, which comes from across the street at the Ledyard Center School, and uh, then you know that that should uh, end that problem. Uh, finally, the town's pension manager, new pension manager ING, has been having group and individual meetings with town hall employees. Uh, for those that are involved in the 457 plan, uh, it's, a, it's a benefit that the town has provided for near 20 years now. Uh, for all employees and for newer employees, it is the employee share of the defined contribution pension plan. Uh, so those are going well, they're well received. It's, it's a little bit of a, a, a little different because we've never done this education program before. And so we're getting some very, very good uh, feedback on that as employees start to recognize the benefits of these programs. Thank you. Any questions for the mayor? Yes. On March 3rd, there was an article in the London Daily that talked about the car accident over on the Long Cove Road. It indicated that the Connecticut State Police do not continue to plug in the search of this engine for hiding in the woods. My question is. Every time I read something in the paper where, where K-9 is involved in life, our dogs never seem to be there in, in, in recent. Okay, my first reaction in reading the article was, it's about time the state dogs were in Ledyard, since the Ledyard dogs are uh, sometimes preoccupied. No, I can't no, understand that. What happened to officers? Uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of scheduling. It's a matter of if the officers are not here. Uh, I understand that. Again, there's no cost to us. Uh, it's one of the things that Ledger has available to us. Actually, whether we're an independent department or a resident trooper, there's mutual aid. Uh, it, I will say that I think it's unusual. I can't remember another case where other town canines were used. It's usually ours because we do have the two. I just find out Ryan here is the town. Yeah. We've got the state police uh, brought dead dogs in, and ours were. It, it, it was unusual. I can certainly look into that. In fact, that's a very good question. And uh, again, maybe I was so relieved that our dogs <laughs> were just <laughs> enough that uh, I didn't think we were pursuing. Thank you. Mr. Eichelberg. With regard to turning the billing for water over to Rodney, um, <coughs> is this kind of a one way bridge? Once we do this, there's no turning back. Absolutely not. Uh, we will be retaining and we will have access to all of the records. Uh, it's a, it's initially, it's anticipated. If we proceed with this, and again, there are many hurdles to get over. There's negotiations that have to go on both here in the town with our unions and with Groton Utilities. Uh, and initially, it's anticipated that we might have a one-year contract with a one-year uh, renewal after that. Uh, we really want to take this slow. It is it is something interesting. It's not just the physical billing, but it's also the, you know how the customers are going to uh, to deal with the change. It is going to be quite a dramatic change. We've always had uh, a place for bill uh, bills to be paid here in town. Uh, we do anticipate whether it stays here or goes out of town that we're going to monthly billing, which will certainly help the process somewhat. Uh, but we're also, part of this is to provide many more options to our rate payers uh, for how they can pay. And we think that is going to be a major step forward with helping our rate payers uh, to make their payments. So, you know, are, are we locked into anything? Uh, we're locked in for the contract, whatever it is, but we're, rec we're going very deliberately on this. Okay, good. Any other questions for the mayor? Uh, under all business, we have one item, but we are not prepared to act on that this evening. Um, would anybody like to amend the agenda at this time under new business? Uh, we have the consent calendar, I'll which is the consent calendar. Second. Okay, the consent calendar is um, on that calendar is just a list of routine reappointments. Anybody like to remove anything? Um, Roxanne, would you call the roll? <coughs> Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. 
Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Um, item number three, administration. I will move to appoint the following to the Ledger Town Center Committee <coughs> with the structure contained in the resolution authorizing the Ledger Town Center Committee to continue their efforts to encourage economic development in Ledger for a period ending July 27, 2014. Mr. Kevin Dombrowski, Republican, 84 Town Farm Road, Ledger, Town Council Representative. Mr. Louis Gabordi, Democrat, 4 Chatham Berwick, Ledger, Town Council Representative, and Ms. Stephanie Calhoun, Democrat, 118 Gallup Hill Road, Ledger, Board of Education Representative. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Soms? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dubrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Item number four. I'll move to appoint Ms. Ellen M. Granger, Democrat of 15 Third Street Drive, Dales Ferry, to the Library Commission for a two-year term ending November 7, 2015, filling a vacancy left by Mr. Moore. Second. Any discussion? I'd like to thank Mr. Moore for his service and uh, Ms. Granger for stepping up. Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Item number five. I'll move to a to uh, um, okay. To appoint Ms. Patricia A. Arsenal, Democrat of Six Arrowhead Drive, Ledger, to the Commission for Senior Citizens for a two year term ending December 9, 2015, filling a vacancy left by Ms. Ms. Moore. Second. Any discussion? I, I'd just like to say that Mrs. Arsenal will take this very seriously. I know she'll do a wonderful job. And, and it's a good time to point out as well, both um, you and Bill um, thanking people for stepping forward. You know, we're in a really good position with our committees and commissions. We actually have a number of people that have asked to be on committees and commissions. I mean, we have like a bench of people waiting to serve, and it's just such a good position to be in. We're very fortunate. Any other comments, discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Z. Bratton? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Item number six. I'll move to adopt a proposed resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a grant application and grant award for the town of Ledger to receive up to $125,000 per year from the Department of Health and Human Services, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration for Drug-Free Communities <coughs> Support Program as contains the draft dated March 11, 2014. And I've asked Mary, because of her familiarity, to talk about this a little bit. Did we have a second? Second. Okay, this is a continuation of the um, grant that we're presently working under, um, and it's uh, with Ledger Light Health District, and it's our Ledger Safe Teens Coalition, and the purpose of the grant is to reduce substance abuse among youth, and over time reduce substance abuse among adults by addressing the factors in the community that increase the risk of substance abuse, and to promote factors that minimize um, the risk and the coalition is made up of um, a number of townspeople. The mayor and I are also serve on this, and um, we ha will do some in-kind uh, services to um, help pay for the grant. Any questions? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. Davis. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, if I may. Yes. Uh, I just want to indicate to the council they don't know it that. Uh, it's a five-year five grant, so it will be $125,000 per year. There is a matching in-kind grant, uh, in-kind services required. Yes. Right. And you're all aware of that. Yes, yes. Okay. that's right. And, and we are doing, yes, yeah. right now we're, I, I, we're doing If that. I may speak to that last point, just that mm -hmm. we, I, I served on this uh, committee during my entire time as principal, and um, coming up with the in-kind services was not difficult. 
touches just about every department in the right. town. I'm filling out one for my office right now, mm -hmm. uh, so it won't be difficult. So uh, again, it's a, it's a very good program. Uh, the resolution says up to 125 a year, and the details say 125 a year. Well, they're applying for the grant. They don't have it yet. So we don't, so we don't know how much we're going to get. We're applying for up to 125. Up to, yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay, well, my confusion is on the other page where it says yes. it is 125. Yeah. Page 2 just says it is for 125000 Hmm? We could take the words up to out. Okay. Um, mo who made the motion? I did. You're upset friendly. Can you be friendly? Uh, yes. <laughs> and the seconder? Second. Okay, we'll just take up to out. Any other discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Um, Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. McCordy? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Nine in favor, zero. The motion carries. There's two items under finance. Mr. France. I make a motion to authorize the Ledger Regional VA FY14 budget to be overspent by $40,000. The funding to come from an increase in nursing revenue. $30,000 to account 1013-0101-53300, professional tech services. And $10,000 to one, account 1013-0101-58300, employee reimbursement mileage. Second. VNA has uh, seen an increase in the number of patients that they've uh, seen, and that is a core house that a corresponding increase in revenue. Uh, the revenue far exceeds the forty thousand uh, dollars. The increased revenue far exceeds the forty thousand dollars. We're looking to overexpend. So it's, uh, it's basically to cover services provided that they anticipate for the rest of the year. Any questions? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Dombrowski. Yes. Mr. Eichelberg. Yes. Mr. France. Yes. Mr. Gordy. Yes. Mr. Marshall. Yes. <coughs> Yes. Motion carries. Item number eight. Make a motion to adopt and propose an ordinance amending an ordinance for purchasing as contained in the draft dated February 12, 2014. Second. This was the subject of our public hearing. Correct. Any further questions? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Gabordi? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Um, land use planning. One <coughs> item. Number nine. I make a motion to accept the owner's view into the town road inventory as the public in accordance with ordinance number 45, an ordinance amending an ordinance regulating the addition of any new street or highway to the highway system of the town of Legend. Motion's been made and seconded. I've asked Mr. Dombrowski to give us a little history. And so, as Mr. Gardner had pointed out during his public comment about the history of the stuff he's gone through, uh, there's been uh, increased scrutiny by the town council, uh, as I noted from Mr. Lamb, to look at how Ordinance 45 is upheld. So we've asked for increased documentation, as, as we see in all the corresponding uh, attachments here in this file verify that we had all the, uh, the ducks in a row, so to say, to verify that the Planning Commission has agreed to accept it, the, uh, the road, uh, the uh, Public Works Director has agreed to it, that the road meets the requirements for Ordinance 45. We have the letter from the developer's engineer stating that the road meets the ordinance. There's also a letter from the Public Works Director uh, showing the deficiencies that were in the road, which required the bond to be set, $40,000, which was set by the Planning Commission, to verify that those uh, improvements to meet the requirements for the 45 are, are done in accordance with that. Um, we do have a one-year warranty period upon acceptance of the road that it is completed in accordance uh, with the requirements. Um, the one final part of the whole thing is the name uh, issue, um, which came to light after land use had met. Um, after the land use had met and agreed to forward this on to the town council for, for full approval, uh, I had received an email from the town planner, Mr. Carly Carno, asking, noting that we had approved to move it forward and was there any discussion on the name of the road. Uh, my response back to Charlie Carno was that there was no discussion.
discussion at our meeting about the name of the road, nor was there any correspondence received in objection to the name of the road. Henceforth, these three emails that came forward that were dated back in August that never showed up in the public forum that, to, that, were, direct, that were provided to the town planner, but they were never forwarded to the council. They never showed up that I could see in any of the planning commission's correspondence documents. Um, it, just, it was never there anywhere. But we have three emails, one from the fire marshal, one from the chief of the Legend Fire Department, and also uh, from Paula Smith for Legend Emergency Services. Um, the dispatch objecting to the name of the road since its similarity to Starter's Wharf. Um, I also received a phone call today from Fire Chief Tony Saccone from the Gales Ferry Fire Department objecting to the same thing. point, I kind of like, I spent four hours last night going through state statute, going through our ordinances, going through the subdivision regulations. Um, so one of the things that I noted in the subdivision regulations is specifically prohibited, and I'm going to read the section that says section 4.2.8 states streets, uh, oh, wrong one, 4.2.9 no duplication of street names shall be permitted except as indicated in item 4.2.8 above, and similar sounding names shall be avoided. All street names are subject to the approval of the commission. So, Planning Commission apparently, in their review of the, sub the subdivision, when it was under their application, did not think that Stoddard View was close enough to start to walk to be of concern. They apparently never received the, uh, this correspondence before they had their public hearings as far as the application was pointed out in front of them for public comment. So at this point, the only thing I could find, state statute basically says it's up to the town and how we want to name roads based on local statute of, uh, regulations and ordinances. Our ordinances are silent on road naming. Ordinance 45 does not mention how you name a road. We do have another ordinance, number 54, that regards renaming roads, which just basically tells us the town council can uh, submit to the planning commission for consideration of renaming the road. Um, so I, at this point, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. The easiest way to move forward is to accept the road as it is based upon all the warranty deed information that we have presented to us. Um, and any other um, deed that might be out there. Uh, the only other thing we could do is reject this application and send it back to planning for their consideration. So those are, in my opinion, the only two options we have. If I might make a comment, because I did some research today as well. Um, I do plan on supporting this. Um, I, I did some not as extensive research as you do. I appreciate the time you spent on it. I went back and simply looked at minutes. Um, there was didn't appear to be any discussion about this in the planning uh, zoning me meeting minutes. Um, I was able to find the letters, but not on IQM2. I found the letters on the ledger development, what I call the rogue site. Um, I found them there, which um, was a little disappointing to me because I thought they should be on the um, on the IQM2 portal. And I think at this time to penalize the developer would be very unfair. I'll be honest that if this was coming to us before he spent one penny, I would sort of say, hey, would you consider naming it something different? But not at this stage of the game. You know, the horse is, uh, what's my expression the last couple of days? The ship has sailed. Um, and, you know, as other people have mentioned, um, you know, there are towns where they have a first street and a first avenue and a first road and a first whatever. So um, my point you are. Yes, that, that's, that's very true. However, I would say that for those that are doing the review of Ordinance 45, at that point, uh, if, when we're doing that, we need to fix the process because something clearly went wrong. And um, certainly not on the part of the developer, and um, so it's my intention to support this. Any other comments? Uh, I'm going to support this as well because the time to bring this up was months ago when this first came to the First Commission. and. Uh, and name was first mentioned. It's, it's ridiculous to talk about it now. There's all kinds of legal documents out there with the name on it, and to change them now is just uh, pointless. Uh, the second thing would be, uh, as far as the condition of the roads, 
Is there a binder code down there or is it a finished product? I believe it's just the binder code, the finished product is not down yet. All right. Well, I've been through Mr. Geiger's subdivisions before and he produces a quality product. So I believe that the end result will be a quality subdivision. And right now it's still under construction, correct? So there's still heavy equipment going up and down the road? No, we'll keep the heavy equipment Okay. But it's not finished yet. No. But based on Mr. Gardner's history, I believe when he's done, it'll be up to standards. So I will support uh, both items on the agenda. Any other comments? Mr. Solms. Uh, the Planning Commission, I'm sorry, the uh, Land Use Planning, Land Use, what is it? L U P P W. When we met last <coughs> week about this, made a request that area of the road that is settled be either identified or blocked off or filled, and we did receive the uh, uh, public, whatever it is, um, Mr. Mr. Dombrowski and Mr. Allen and I received photographs of some patch fill that was used to fill that hole to prevent uh, any potential accidents. Right. I also feel that it's, it's unfortunate that we've come this far without noticing that we have two similar sound I intend to support it, but I would ask that we try to avoid this in the future. And it, it looks like that's something for the Planning Commission to look at uh, so that we don't get all the way down the road and, and find ourselves in the same dilemma again. So, those are the uh, Comment and question. Um, I live at 246 Haley Road Ledger. About a half a mile away, there is a 246 Haley Road at Groton. You'd be surprised how many times they get my packages. Even though it's an entirely different town and entirely different zip codes, and I get their packages, so I understand the issue. But as the other counselors have said, horse is out of the barn, the ship is sailed. Um, this is not the time to be trying to make that change. So I intend to support this. But my question is, um, where, what is the status of the uh, changes to Ordinance 45 at this point? Still with the planning and zoning commission. Mr. Friends. Uh, as the other council, I will, I will also support this, I uh, think, due to the timing. Uh, but one thing that I do appreciate in bringing the issue up is to put a point a hole in our process. I think that as part of Ordinance 45, we need to make sure that there's a formal checklist developed, developed by planning and zoning. So when it gets them and they're the final say, they know that if emergency services in the name of the roads, they have their input and it's been done formally that it's been done. So that would be my, that was a discussion over this past week. Uh, we need to definitely close that hole uh, for all future situations. Thank you. Thank you. Any, yes, Mr. Hall. Uh, um, just a couple quick comments on it. Um, it is process. As Councilor France stated, it has to come out earlier. The emergency services, people that are stepping forward with these comments aren't doing it um, out of, out of, uh, self-serving positions are doing it out of everybody's best interest so I agree with that um, and I, I uh, a comment was made regarding uh, GPS and everybody has GPS and, and mapping programs so I asked that comment of uh, uh, State Sergeant McDermott and uh, Trooper uh, Officer Finkelstein as well and uh, I was very surprised to hear that their mapping programs in their cruisers still call Colonel Edward Highway Route 27 and still call Route 12 Military Highway. So uh, the comment was, those systems can get you to the wrong address just as quickly. And that's the problem. So we can't rely on the great technology that we have, uh, but we do need to be cautious about road naming in the future. And I, I think it's critical to have uh, the emergency services input before it uh, gets too far down the road. I agree with the emergency services that two, two roads sounding the same can be confusing to somebody who was making an emergency <coughs> call. But I think we missed our opportunity by not appearing at a public hearing and making that known, so I will support the, uh, the road. I should just mention, I think we're all aware, but I'm not sure that the public is aware, those letters from emergency services were written in August. And while I understand that's past the public hearing. I thought it was the, I'm responding to the email that I got just recently. No, those emails, those emails, those emails were originally really submitted in yeah. August. Oh, August. 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 They didn't come, they didn't just, come, the council was not aware of any of those emails until Friday. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, 
I, I take what the uh, fire marshal and the department say very seriously. But I think we have situations in town that they've had to accommodate. You know, we have Shoeville Road, which is three roads with one name. And we have 214, which is one road with three names, four if you count 214. And I think it can be accommodated. If it had been caught earlier, I would have agreed with the change. Yeah. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roxy, would you call the roll? Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Cavorty? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichel? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, before I bang the gavel, I would just like to say for the viewing, the viewing audience that even though this meeting was only an hour, Many of us have been sitting through five-hour budget meetings, so we don't just come here two times a month and wrap up quickly in an hour. There's a lot of work happening, and you're all invited to attend all of those long and um, very, um, very informative meetings, and I would invite you to do that. And with that,